Well, welcome back. We've got two quick topics for you tonight. They are co-functions and evaluating trig on the calculator. So, for the first part, you shouldn't need a calculator, but obviously you definitely need to grab your calculator for the second part. So if you don't have it, pause it, go get it, and uh, come back and get ready to rock and roll. All right, so the first of our two topics tonight is called co-functions. So take a look at this picture. Let's go ahead and get this in your notebook. We've got a nice right triangle. It's a Pythagorean identity. We've got a 3, 4, 5. And in each of these angles, I've labeled something different. Okay, so I've got a theta down here, and we've got another Greek letter up here. So let's just, if you want to call them A and B, that's fine. Let's just call them something different. And basically, here's what cofunctions are saying. If this is a right triangle, this is already 90 degrees. Well, in a triangle, the three angles add up to 180 degrees. Therefore, if you've already counted for 90 degrees here, that means this angle up here and this angle here must also add up to 90 degrees. And that's what we're saying to the right here. So hopefully that makes sense to you. If this angle's 90, that means I have 90 left out of the 180. Therefore, this angle and this angle must total 90, and that's what I'm saying. Theta plus my other angle equals 90. Now, I can say that in two different ways. I can say, basically, I can take this equation and solve for this variable, and all I would do is subtract theta from both sides. So this is saying that angle could be equal to 90 minus theta, or I could say, say theta plus my other angle equals 90, and if I solve for theta, I could subtract my other angle, so theta equals 90 minus that angle. Maybe it looks more confusing it is as it is, but basically all we're saying is these two angles add up to 90. So such examinations lead us to three sets of cofunctions. And let's pause for a moment and copy these into your notebook here. Now here's the trick, and I'm going to start. It's in a nice green box on your screen. It says notice the connection of the letters C and O. So stay with me. If you get this part, you get the whole thing. Sine and cosine are cofunctions. Do you notice how sine and then I say cosine are cofunctions? So notice how they're grouped together. Tangent, now put a co with it, cotangent are cofunctions. So they're grouped together. And secant, put the word co in front of it, cosecant are cofunctions. So they're grouped together. And the whole key is this last star here. Co-functions are complementary. So again, back to your geometry days, that means these two functions should add to 90 degrees. So I just want to stress, every function you say should have a co that goes with it, and that's its co-function. Sine, throw the word co in front of it, cosine. Tangent, throw the word co in front of it, cotangent. Secant, throw the word co in front of it, cosecant. Those are your co-functions, and they are all complementary, CO, add up to 90. Example 1. If cosine of 2x minus 25 equals the sine of 55, find the value of x. Well, you notice they don't tell you that they're cofunctions. You've got to just recognize that. Notice one side says sine and the other side one says cosine. There's your hint that they are cofunctions. And again, cofunctions are complementary. So what are you going to do? You're just going to take your two pieces, your two angles, I should say. So I have 2x minus 25 plus 55, and since they're complementary, they add up to 90. And it's that simple. Now we'll just solve for x. Uh, these are like terms, so I really have 2x plus 55 minus 25 should be 30 equals 90. Simple equation, 2x, subtract your 30 over, I get equals 60, therefore, x equals 30. There we go. If tangent of x plus 20 equals cotangent of x, I'm sorry, if cotangent of x, the value of x is. All right, well, there you go. You just got to read it to yourself. You have tangent, and then you have a cotangent. Therefore, they are cofunctions again. And we're just going to say that they are complementary. So this guy's angle, x plus 20, plus this guy's angle, has to total 90. Quick solve for x. I've got two like terms there. 2x plus 20 equals 90. 
subtract my 20, uh, 2x equals 70, and hopefully you get x equals 35. Hopefully not too shabby. Number three, if sine of x plus 20 equals cosine of 2x plus 10, find x. All right, pause it, try it on your own. You have sine and cosine. So hopefully you've caught their co-functions. Pause it, see what you get. Hopefully you follow my work. I've got an x equals 20. I've got x plus 2x makes 3x plus 30 equals 90. And hopefully you follow that and get a nice x equals 20. Well, that's topic number one for the night. Let's jump into topic two. You're going to need to grab your calculator right now. All right, the second part is called evaluating trig functions on the calculator. Now, it might seem very easy, but I just want to stress, if you look at your calculator, you have a sine button, cosine button, and tangent button. You don't have any buttons for the reciprocal functions. So I want to talk about how we're going to evaluate them on the calculator. So for example, if you wanted to type the cosecant of, let's say, 30, okay, on your calculator, there is no cosecant button. So let's make a note in our book here, on our notebook, what we're going to have to type in. I would say cosecant is really 1 over sine 30. So on my calculator, I would have to type in 1 divided by the sine of 30. Now, what else to watch out for? 30 is a degree. So I should be in degree mode. So grab your calculator, 1 divided by the sine of 30, and hopefully you get 2 as an answer. Let's try some more interesting ones. Number 2. The value of cosecant 138 degrees and 23 minutes rounded to four decimal places is. All right, so it looks very simple. I mean, they're basically just asking you to type this in your calculator and circle the right choice. So how are we going to type it in? All right, so hopefully you're thinking cosecant is really 1 over sine. And we do need to keep those minutes and seconds. Okay, so on our calculator, hopefully you have it in front of you and you're playing along here. If you don't, you're just making it tougher on yourself. I'm going to hit 1 divided by sine. It should open a parenthesis. You'll type in your 138. Do you remember where the degree in minutes button is? Uh, you're going to have to hit that second angle. Okay, so look for it on your screen. We've used it before. Second angle. I think the first thing in there should be your degrees. And then you'll have to go back, type in 23, and go back to second angle and get your minute. All right, what mode should you be in? Well, just ask yourself, do you have degrees or radians? And it should be obvious if you're in degrees because you will see a degree symbol. So again, I should be in degree mode. I get a nice 1.50, what did it say? Four decimal places, 5057. And hopefully you're getting the same thing. All right, for our next question, it was multiple choice, and it says which expression when rounded to three decimal places is equal to negative 1.55? Well, it seems like such a simple question, yet there's a little trick to it, and that's you watching your mode. Okay, so I can't stress enough, you've got to understand the difference between a degree and a radian, and a degree should be so obvious. If it's in degrees, you're going to see a degree symbol. All right, if you see pi, we need to switch to radian mode. So degree, we're in degree mode, pi, we're in radian mode. So let's take, let's start with example two. Okay, so example two, I'm literally, I want to make sure we're all in the same mode, degree mode. We're typing in tangent, 49 degrees, 20 minutes. Go ahead, pause it, type it in, see what you get. I get 1.163, which is not the answer I'm looking for. So I'm going to kill that choice, and I'm going to do the other degree first. I'm going to try to go get choice 4 here. And I'm going to say, okay, still in degree mode. I'm going to type in, this time, 1 divided by the sine of negative 118. Okay, it's cosecant, so I have to do 1 divided by the sine. Pause it, see what you get. I've got negative 1.132, which is not the answer I'm looking for, so I'm going to kill that choice. Now, the sneaky ones. If I try option 1 here, secant of 5 pi over 6. Notice they don't give me degrees. All right, so I've got to switch my calculator to radian mode. 
So I'm switching my mode, and how am I typing this in? Well, I'm typing in 1 divided by the cosine of 5 pi over 6. Pause it, see what you get. I get negative 1.155, and indeed that's what I'm looking for. Now, let me show you one other trick you could have done. If you wanted, you could have converted this answer here into degrees, and then you wouldn't have had to switch your mode. So if you wanted to do that, all you would say to yourself is pi over 6 is a number I should know. Pi over 6 is 30 times 5 makes that 150. So if you were to type this in in degree mode, you'd have to use cosine of 150 here. Well, that does it for us tonight. We've covered two quick topics, and uh, hopefully you're feeling pretty good. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a great night.